chairman, gentlemen of the committee, and fellow citizens. It is a great pleasure, even at the long distance separating the national capital from the nation's metropolis, to take part in the opening ceremonies of the electrical exposition, whose managers have paid me the high compliment of requesting me to say a few words of welcome. To say that I am delighted to be tonight is just as expressive as the greeting of my old-time friend, the blind preacher, who never in his life met me, but to express his delight at seeing me, when in fact he had never seen a living face in 20 years. Like him, I seem to see you, and to feel the influence of your presence, although you are so far distant, for I know you are in the sound of my voice, or at least I am so assured. Your managers have asked me to speak to you over a distance of 250 miles and across five states. But what I shall say is insignificant compared with the impressive fact that the electrical genius of our age has made possible this marvelous system of communication which annihilates time and space and distance. You who are working in the field of electricity are performing a service of great utility giving the people an opportunity to behold what wonders God hath wrought with this mysterious agency. No wonder that in every material development, with universal support by our people, the inventions of this age and this country lead the world. No wonder that you succeed when you find all the people profitably and happily using your newest invention as daily instruments to do their work, to furnish their life, their intelligence, their power, increasing their comfort and convenience, and adding to the happiness of life. Your remarkable discoveries and the immediate application of them to the uses of daily life follow each other with such rapidity that the human mind is almost stunned with amazement at your triumphs and achievements. Yet so quickly do these appliances enter into our everyday affairs, at the office, the home, the factory and the shop, that we unconsciously utilize them as if they, they had always been our possession, and as if the telephone, telegraph, electric light, electric car, and the countless other manifestations of electrical energy had always existed for the comfort and convenience of man. This may, indeed, well be called the electric age, when electricity plays so important and powerful a part in almost every phase of social, commercial, and industrial life. You and your fellow workers in other lands have put the girdle of electricity about the earth, and the spark which frankly drew from the sky is the magic spark which contracts the world into such narrow limits that time and distance, land and sea, are eliminated and all parts of the globe are put into immediate and continuous contact. To have done this is to have accomplished the as brilliant as any recorded in the pages of civilization, progress, and yet it is only one small item in the vast 